the integrator. We have seen in this circuit that the rate of charge flow is not constant. The rate it, char it changes is quick initially as capacitor looks like a short circuit and gradually the rate of increase slows so we get something that when plotted looks like this sketch. Now the section I have circled is indicating that here V out is increasing at a fixed constant rate which is due to charges accumulated accumulating at a fixed constant rate e.g. a constant current so this part is because of the constant current so we can easily arrange things so that this circled area is all that contributes because if the input voltage is changing rapidly with respect to how quickly the capacitor is charging that we specify with our choice of R and C then we can time things so when V in changes direction the capacitor is only charged up to the perimeter of our circle section here. This would then result in an output that looks like this. The dotted lines here show what would be the profile if we used a much slower changing V in. We can see here this is pretty linear and then uh, if, if this, if this uh, V in was a much uh, longer and took longer then obviously we'd start to get this non-linear effect of the charging of the capacitor. So by choosing both a large resistor and a capacitor we then can produce a constant rate of current increase and decrease a constant rate of charges flowing per second. Let's see in more detail how that can work. If we ensure that V in is much greater than VC by making the resistor very large then we're also approximating that the current I through whole circuit is as follows. Here we consider the voltage drop across the capacitor as being so small we can ignore it when measuring the current. So we're saying that the current here is simply the V in over R the voltage drop across the capacitor is such a tiny amount we can just assume that I is equal V V in over R. Now let's think about this very small amount of voltage across plates of capacitor. It will of course be due to an equally small accumulation of charge on the plates. So we can write CV equals or C little bit of V equals a little bit of charge where the triangle here represents a little bit of. We can rewrite 2 in terms of instantaneous current like so by dividing both sides of equation 2 by T. So we're going to divide the, both sides of this by a, a small amount of time, delta T we call that, which is same as writing C little bit of voltage over delta T or we call that delta a little bit of so C delta voltage over delta T equals I because we've multi we've divided through by T and basically uh, uh, delta charge over delta T is the instantaneous current so we can just write the current down there those of you familiar with calculus will recognize this as C dV by dt equals I we can substitute equation 1 into this so we can write dv dt equals 1 over cr v in in words this is saying that the rate v out changes is proportional to v in and if we then multiply through by delta t we get this delta v c which is the output voltage equals v in over rc times delta t when v in is a constant as at the top of our square waves so here we've got constant values so here it's constant constant value constant value and at the bottom it's constant value constant value we will get straight lines for V out so we get a straight line going up and a straight line coming down this is in the form of Y equals MX uh, it's a straight line plot where in the, where X equals T and M would equal V in over RC so it's very much like a, a y equals mx here. So where this x is equal to the t 
and the M is equal to the Vn over Rc. So looking at one of our square wave pulses, this one here, and multiplying Vn over Rc by T, you get total voltage stored on the capacitor plates over time. This is why this can be described as an integrator, since as long as we use a big enough resistor and capacitor, we get an output, which is the integral of the input voltage. In the lab, we'll, we'll go through this and show that uh, this square wave does in fact show a, um, an integrated output, and we'll also show what happens when you uh, use a sine wave as the voltage in and uh, let's just we can check to see if we get uh, an integrated output from a sine wave